Hey everyone, and welcome to our session. I'm Sonia Parmar, and I'm a senior product manager in AWS Systems Manager team. I'm really excited about all things cloud operations and IT service management. And today we'll be talking about how do we automate IT service management using, using AWS. Let's get started. So today on the agenda, we first start off with what are the common challenges in ITSM that our customers face today? Next up, we'll talk about how AWS Cloud Operations model can help you address these challenges. And then we'll talk about AWS Systems Manager, which is a key component of the AWS Cloud Operations model. And finally, we learn how all of it actually works in AWS through a demo. And the demo will highlight how we can actually automate service management, and integrate service management with operations in AWS. Before we get into how AWS Cloud Operations can help you automate ITSM, wanted to talk to you about what are some of the problems we have heard from our customers. The first thing that we have heard consistently from our customers is how ITSM processes today are heavily dependent on manual operations. Either customers are creating change requests manually or manually sending them for approvals and waiting for approvals. The second is customers often operate in multiple environments, and that means they have to learn and um, use multiple tools. And these tools often work in silos. And to make things work, the ITSM tools often do not talk to the operations tool. And lastly, when we think about compliance, it makes things all the more complicated. And when during the time of an audit, uh, our customers often have to look through who approved what, look at logs, which actually is a lot more time consuming and complicated. So when we heard about these problems, AWS Cloud Operations started thinking about how we want to address these challenges for our customers. Customers often think of governance and agility as a trade-off. If you want more compliance and governance, you'll have to slow your processes down. At one side, you have your IT teams. You have your cloud IT teams who want to establish the right set of controls and governance and process. On the other side, you have your DevOps team that wants to keep innovating and keep operating with the speed of the cloud. And this is where AWS Cloud Operation comes in. We let, we let you govern and we let you be compliant with the industry standards. At the same time, we help you automate uh, and be agile with the speed of the clouds. And how we help you with the agility is through automation, through self-service access, and to help you respond to changes quickly. So now that we understand where cloud operations model fits in, next up we'll talk about AWS Systems Manager, which is a key component of AWS Cloud Operations model. AWS Systems Manager helps you um, operate in AWS or on-premises or in the hybrid environment consistently. When we in AWS Cloud Operations team were thinking about all of these challenges that you were facing in ITSM today, we thought about how do we build a next generation of ITSM tools that could help you address these challenges. And that is where AWS Systems Manager comes in. We'll today spend a lot of our time talking about two main services or two main domains of ITSM. One is event management and change management. Second is change management. In the event management, we have AWS Systems Manager Ops Center supporting you with the next generation of event management. And in change management, we have AWS Systems Manager Change Manager bringing in all the operation excellent, um, bringing in all the AWS Systems Manager Change Manager that takes an AWS 20 years plus of experience in operations, and it helps you automate change management for the modern needs. And when we look at AWS Systems Manager Ops Center or Change Manager, um, I wanted to highlight how the way AWS Systems Manager helps you with ITSM is differentiated from the experience that we have today in the, um, in the ITSM industry. First, AWS Systems Manager has taken an automation first experience when it comes to service management. We understand that manual processes do not scale. And if we want you, our customers, to keep innovating with the agility and the speed of the cloud, 
we need to make sure that automation is tied into our processes right from the beginning. So all the ITSM tools that Systems Manager offers you has automation integrated in each part of the process. Second, we understand that customers need to look at changes and events occurring at a centralized uh, location. And hence, both of these tools offer a centralized change management to help you remediate operational issues and view changes across accounts. Second, in order to avoid making unintentional changes, it integrates with change calendar. For instance, if you have any certain periods of time blocked, for uh, if you have any proportional events going on, or if you have sale events going on, our change management tool integrates with change calendar to make sure you have, we do not make unintentional changes in those block periods of time. Third, it integrates with the native AWS tools for additional safety. For instance, um, Systems Manager integrates with AWS CloudTrail to make sure you actually understand what is the impact of a change you just executed. So not only will you be able to see what change you made or what request was executed, you will be able to see which CloudTrail event and which API was executed, called and executed. And finally, um, in order to meet you where you are, these tools integrate with other ITSM tools of your choice to meet you where you are. Now let's get to the meat of it. Um, let's meet James. James is a senior DevOps engineer and um, his main roles and responsibilities include implementing monitoring and alerting solutions, proactively identifying and resolving issues related to his systems, and also ensuring compliance with the rel relevant regulations and industry standards. Now James, um, James wants to do all of this and we want to help James get to all of these um, processes in the most streamlined fashion and, and in a way that James doesn't have to change multiple tools and doesn't have to go through multiple processes in order to achieve this. So today, um, the main use case that we'll talk about in the demo concerns James. James, your senior DevOps engineer, wants to make sure that all the environment or all the instances running in your environment um, have the right set of applications installed on them. So let's take an example. James, your DevOps engineer, looks at, uh, comes across um, an instance in your environment which has an unapproved application running on it. Now, James wants to make sure any instance which has unapproved applications running on it are stopped immediately in order to be compliant with his organization's needs. Let's see how, how AWS will help James get to this. So um, first, we'll start off with a brief introduction of how we help James collect inventory of his instances running on AWS or hybrid. Then we'll set up an AWS config rule, which helps James understand which of his instances or which of the resources are non-compliant with the standards set by the uh, with industry standards or with organization policies. And third, we will write an event bridge rule, which will automatically generate events, which we call ops items, um, every time a non-compliant resource is identified. So here you can clearly see how a lot of um, these workflows are automated, wherein if James um, ever ident if James creates a config rule, anytime a resource is not compliant with that rule, an ops item will immediately be triggered and will be brought up to James' attention. So now, um, once James creates an event bridge rule, um, we will see when a non-compliant resource um, is discovered. Uh, how an ops item will be created in the fourth step. And in the fifth step, in order to remediate such non-compliant um, resources, and in order to address this ops item that was created, James will create a change request to, um, to fix it. Now, because James do not have the permissions to make these changes as, um, as, um, as the organization follows a change management process, that James will need approval from James manager 
to approve uh, the change that the teams want to make. We will see once the change is approved by James Manager, the change will automatically be executed, um, stopping the EC2 instance that was non-compliant in the first place. So now you will see in the next demo on how James uh, will not be will not need to code anything in order to stop these um, non-compliant EC2 instance. So initially, we spoke about how AWS Systems Manager helps you manage your hybrid uh, AWS or on-prem resources consistently. So you can see that we are in AWS Systems Manager inventory. And under inventory, I can see all the resources that Systems Manager is managing. And all we have to do is install the SSM agent to consistently manage this inventory. Now let's take the example of an application that we have running, which is the AWS Tools for Windows. Now what we'll do next is, um, James is creating a config rule, which is easy to manage instance applications which are not allowed. And here in this config rule, what we are doing is we're defining the exact version of the application we do not want installed or uh, James do not want installed in his um, um, in his instances on his instances. So we can see that um, in the config rule that James has defined, we see application name and we see the actual value, which is the Amazon Coreto version. And if you see, we can um, see one of the resource um, is already non-compliant with the rule that James had defined in config. So next up, what we'll see is we'll go to um, Amazon Event Bridge, and in Event Bridge, we will define we will define a rule wherein every time a non-compliant resource is detected, or any time a config rule compliance change happens, we will under target create a systems manager ops item. So here, what's happening is we are creating an automated workflow wherein every time a non-compliant resource or a compliance change occurs, an ops item is created. And hence, James will immediately get visibility into all the operational events that needs his attention. Now, James periodically checks his ops items that are open. And if you can see, under ops center, we can already see a config compliance ops item that is triggered. And in ops item, we can see the last ops item, which is the EC2 instance is running the unapproved application, which was the Amazon Coreto version that we had already uh, created the config rule for. Now let's look at the actual resource on. And in ops center, we can also look at all the related details for this particular ops item. We can see which time this ops item was created or this non-compliant resource was detected. Now let's go ahead and try to remediate this instance. So what James is doing is James is trying to running James is trying to run an automation run book in order to stop this EC2 instance because it's running an unapproved application. So instead of terminating, let's just choose stopping EC2 instance. Now there are situations where James or your DevOps engineer might not have the right permissions to make this change. And that's where change manager comes in. So we have pre-created an automation document using change manager. And James will, let's go ahead and select the change manager, stop EC2 instance automation that we want to run. What this document is doing is um, it will automatically stop this EC2 instance with permissions. And once it's approved, it will be executed. Now, right now, I will assume the role of 
James manager, Priya, and let's assume the role of James manager and try to approve the change request that James had created. So as we can see, we have approval pending, which is for stopping the EC2 instance. And here we can see which um, automation runbook the change is linked with. So we'll go to the approvals and let's approve this request. So we'll click on approve and under comments we'll, we can add a comment saying approved. Now let's look at the request status has changed from pending approval to approved. As you can see, it's the change is already scheduled to be executed. And now we'll go back to EC2 console and we'll try to see if this instance, which is the Windows demo instance has stopped or not. And you can clearly see that it has, um, the EC2 instance has stopped. So this is just an example of one use case, end-to-end -end use case that we saw in the demo, wherein James encountered a non-compliant resource and James remediated such resource using an automation runbook and using change and using an approval in change manager. One of the beauty, um, what I really wanted to highlight from this video is um, how automation is ingrained in both uh, config remediations and ops items remediations. So what AWS Systems Manager does is helps you with out of the box automation runbooks. These runbooks helps you easily um, achieve your operational tasks or easily execute operational tasks without having to actually code or without having to actually um, spend time manually taking such tasks. And these automation runbooks, um, we have roughly 350 plus out of the box automation runbooks for you to execute, uh, for you to use. And um, these automation runbooks are, um, uh, helps you from all uh, helps you with all sorts of operational tasks right from st um, stopping or starting EC2 instances to attaching IAM rule to an instance. Right, with that we are almost at the end of our session. I wanted to highlight a couple of resources, additional resources that you can. Um, look into for learning more about the cloud operations model and AWS Systems Manager, Ops Center, and Change Manager. Again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, here's my contact details. If you have any ideas, questions, or feedback, we'd love to speak with you. Thank you.